Hi, it's Paul Hill from ITFlee.com. And in this lesson, you're going to learn how you can create groups and manage group memberships within Active Directory users and computers. I also want to help you understand the purpose of groups and how you can use them. Now, this lesson will be completed from the Active Directory users and computers console that's on our domain controller. So if you're not already logged into your domain controller, and if you don't already have the console up, go ahead and pause this video and do so now. Now, the first thing we're going to do is create a new security group inside of our domain users OU that we previously made. You could create this group anywhere. You could right click on itfleet.com and create the group if you would like, but I'm going to create it in the organizational unit that I created before. So under IT Flea, I have domain users. This is where I'm going to create the group. So I'm going to right click on this OU and I'm going to choose new. And then I'm going to choose group. Now the new group window appears and what we need to do is type in a group name and I'm just going to call this sales since this is just an example. Now we can see that the pre windows 2000 name has been populated. That's the same as when you create a new user account. It creates a name that it will be compatible with servers older than server 2000 and we have group scope and group type. Let's take a minute and understand each of these under the group scope. We have three options, domain, local, global, and universal. Basically, this goes from least accessible to most accessible. So let's start with domain local. Now this scope is only usable within the domain it was created and cannot be accessed from another domain, even if there is a trust established. So if we created another domain and established a trust between itfleet.com and let's just say, you know, paulhill.com, we would not be able to access this sales group from the external domain, which it would be paulhill.com. The global group is the same as domain local, except that the group can be accessed from another domain if there is a trust established. So if I built paulhill.com and I wanted to access this group called sales within itfleet.com, I would be able to do that if a trust was established between the two domains. Now a universal group is the same as global, except the group can be accessed by other forests that trust your domain as well. So that's a level above just sharing it between domains. You can actually share it between forests. Most of the time you'll want to leave the global scope selected. And that's what I'm going to do for now. Now under the group type, we have two options, security and distribution. I can keep this really simple. Security is for authentication and distribution is for email lists. So if I want to set up a security group, what I might do is say only people within the sales group can have access to these folders and these files. They can only access these types of computers. Uh, these people can or cannot remote desktop into servers. That kind of stuff was what you'd specify with a security group. Now the distribution group is only used when you have an exchange server set up on your network. And I could create, for example, a IT support group. So if I rename this to IT support, we could create this distribution group. And if, when I added members to the group, for example, all the IT or help desk professionals, when I added them to this group, someone could send an email to IT support and the email would be also sent to every member of this group. So keep in mind that distribution is only used for emails. So if you have an exchange server, you could use a distribution group and security is used for authentication. And nine times out of 10, you're going to be going with the security option. So I'm going to rename this again to sales and I'm just going to click OK. Now, if I go inside of this domain users OU, we can see that the sales group has been created. It's a security group and it is a global group. Now, if we right click on the group, we can choose properties. We can add a description. We can add an email address. We can even expand the scope, but we cannot shrink it. Notice that also the group type we can change from security to distribution if we would like, and we can enter a note. The two most important tabs here are the members and member of tab under the members. We can add people to the group to make them a member of this group. And for example, I'm going to add my paul.hill account. So I'll click the add button and I'm going to type in my name, Paul Hill, and I'm going to click check names. And we can see that it was able to find my name. It underlined the account here. So that means it has successfully resolved the account name. So if I click OK, I can see that I have been added to the group. So I can click apply and those changes now take effect. Now the member of tab is also important. And we can make this group a member of another group. Click add and just say we type in administrators and click check names. We can see that it was able to find the administrators group. If I click OK, now this group sales is a member of the administrators group. If we click apply, what does this mean? Let's think about it. Anyone who's a member of this group 
is also a member of the administrators group. So now everyone that I add to the sales group will also have the same privileges and the same rights as the administrators group because this group is also a member of the administrators group. Now let's look at this a little bit more closely and help you understand exactly what's going on. So I'm gonna to go to the built-in and we're gonna double click on this administrators group right here. And if we go to members, we're gonna find the sales group is listed here. We double click on this. Now we're looking at the sales group and if we open up the sales group members, we can see that Paul Hill is here. So I am in turn by adding myself to the sales group and since the sales group is added to the administrators group, I myself am an administrator. Okay, I hope that makes sense for you guys. So what we're gonna do now is just remove this from the administrators group. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do that. So we're just gonna go back to the sales group and we can delete the group, which I'm gonna do now by right clicking on the group and just choosing delete. We're gonna say yes. And now the group has been deleted. And that, my friend, is all you need to know about creating and managing groups within Active Directory users and computers. I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.